But first, blowout city last night. All Phillies in game two. Or was it? At the end of a ball game or anything else, we see what's transpired, how it played out, and we think that is how it was going to play out all along. That's hindsight bias. It seems obvious after it happens. But we know while we're watching a ball game in real time, there are actually a great many things that could happen if a few things turn here or there. Let's examine them and do a little digging in. Now, maybe there's nothing the Diamondbacks could have done last night, right? I'll acknowledge that. Aaron Nola was never in much danger. Had some traffic in the fourth and the sixth. He got out of both with style. The Phillies also have elite power. Since the start of August, they're second in baseball in slugging only to the Braves and their historic offense, and tied with the Braves for first in home runs. That's the team you're facing now. Schwarber, Turner, Harper, home run bombs. So there are things you can't control but there are things you can control. You can control your sharpness, your execution, your awareness. You can control who's pitching and the matchups you allow. The main question here last night, how long do you ride with Merrill Kelly, the Arizona starter? More specifically, do you let Kelly face the Phillies order a third time? No perfect answer, but I'm reasonably convinced the answer should have been no. Kelly's coming off an excellent season. Park adjusted ERA, he's fourth in the National League this year. Now he's not getting roughed up, but pay close attention to the at-bats at the top of the Phillies order. First go around, Trey Turner, home run. Alec Baum after that, first at-bat, hit a long shot to center field. By the way, watch this again. Alec Thomas out there in center field, long way to go. Has to make that, that almost got out. Second go around, Kyle Schwarber, home run. And then after this, got a good piece of that. Bryce Harper would give one a ride to left field. Now that one didn't go out, but keep in mind, that's hard contact the first times through the order. First two times, and it's 2-0. So, bottom of the sixth, Arizona's down 2-0. Diamondbacks win probability at this point, 15%. Not great, but it's not over. Here comes the top of the lineup for Philadelphia. Kyle Schwarber is leading off. First question, has there been hard contact and damage? The answer is yes. Not terrible, but the answer is yes. Next question, does Merrill Kelly have a drop off in performance the third time through? The answer is normally yes across the board, but Kelly is elite. So let's take a look, shall we? First time through the order, first plate appearance, 289 on base, 312 slugging, well, limits. Second plate appearance, 299, 367. Pretty good shape. Third time through the order, 317 on base. Oh boy. 460 slugging, third time through. Look at the difference. It's about 100 points in slugging. That's significant. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but it's significant. Also, after 75 pitches, here we go. Merrill Kelly, opponent slugged 500 against him after 75 pitches. Kelly was at 70 pitches going through the inning. He's going over 75. These are red flags. It's not good. I'm not saying it's a fait accompli, but it is how it played out. Schwarber leads off, sixth inning, and that ball's gone. And now it's 3-0. Very different game. From there, he would walk Turner and was left in to face Harper and Alec Bohm before getting taken out. So, yeah, he got out of it, sort of gave up a run. Could have been a lot worse. But the damage was done. I want to say this. Tori Lovello is a manager of the year candidate. He's top flight, but I think this one got away from him. It happens. He's down 3-0 with a bullpen game coming in game three. So his hand is forced. He has to choose. Day off today but then he'll need to dig a little deeper into that pen for game three and possibly three straight days. If you saw the wild card series though, Lavella did show you his A squad. This is the pitching line score for game two against Milwaukee. Ryan Thompson, you know, he brings it. Kevin Ginkle, Andrew Southfrank, a left-hander, then Paul Seawald, the closer. That's A squad. That is not where he went last night. So it got worse, much worse. No disrespect, but he couldn't use his high leverage guys down three nothing with a man on, so quickly, yeah, it's a 6-0 ball game on Joe Mantiply. Mantiply's a regular a reliever, no disrespect, but he's not the fireman. The bullpen blow-up obscured the fact that this was a reasonably close game going into that inning. It got so that Tori Lavella was asked after the game, not if he left Kelly in too long, but if he took him out too early. Here's the answer. You know, 3 and nothing. I thought that Joe Mantiply has been throwing the ball real good. It's a great matchup. All the information that I have and everything that, that's that's showing me statistically that 
Joe's going to get under a barrel and it's going to, we're going to get back in the dugout down three nothing. Um, there is no crystal ball, right? I wish there was. Um, it's I'll, I'll be second guessing myself too, right? It's what, it's what we do. Um, you just don't know that side of the, the puzzle. He, you know, I think it was more cl it was closer to 90 pitches. Felt like I was selling out to the stock man to play matchup that we targeted as a very very positive one um, as is coming out on our side. They asked if he thought Kelly was taken out too early. I can't be everywhere, folks. I wish I could be at every game and ask the questions. When Kelly was facing Trey Turner, there wasn't even anyone warming up for the Diamondbacks. I don't get that at all. There's no crystal ball. I'm hearing that a lot in these playoffs, right, the crystal ball. But I don't know if it's going to rain on any given day, but there is a weather report. There are clues. There's data. You have to give it your best shot. Another way of looking at this. We already told you that Kelly becomes less effective, right? The third time through and after 75 pitches. What about the guys he's facing? Turn out, they get much better when they see a pitcher the third time through. Over the last two years, Bryce Harper is slugging 745 in his third at bat against a single pitcher. Number one in all of baseball. Kyle Schwarber, who led off, is slugging 600 the third time he sees a pitcher. It's a double red flag. Worst pitcher, better hitters, don't let it happen. Maybe Phillies were better anyway, I get it, but this one got away from Arizona.